So as you're evaluating potential ERP systems in the marketplace, you should be looking at not just the well-known players, but also the names you may not recognize, but are good options for you. Today, I want to talk about IFS ERP, which is a system you may have never heard of, but it's something you may want to consider. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting Group. We're an independent technology agnostic consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And I should start off by saying that we have no affiliation or tie to IFS. We're 100% agnostic and we provide similar reviews just like this one for other products as well. And so today I wanna to talk about the good and the bad about IFS and why you should at least think about IFS as an option and consider those pros and cons as you go through your ERP evaluation process. Now, IFS is a system that I learned a bit about uh, over the years, helping clients select and implement the product. And just a few weeks ago, I went to the annual IFS conference here in the US in Boston, learned a bit more about the roadmap and the vision for the company and where it's headed, and learned some really interesting things about uh, the future. So I'm gonna talk today about not only what I learned at that conference, but also what we're seeing in the marketplace with our clients that have evaluated and, and ultimately implemented the product. Now, IFS is something that is, it's a product that's big in Europe. There's, it's a European-based company. They have a very, uh, fairly well-established client base in Europe, but they're more uh, relatively new to the U.S. and other markets outside of Europe. So that's part of the reason why a lot of organizations haven't heard of IFS. The other reason a lot of organizations haven't heard of IFS is because they don't spend a ton of money on marketing. They don't sponsor big golf tournaments and they don't advertise at airports and do a lot of the other tactics that the big ERP vendors do. But having said all of that, there are several hundred million in revenue. I think it's around seven to 800 million in revenue that they're generating a year. They've got thousands of clients using the product and they're also a very focused product too. So it's not gonna be a one size fits all type of solution. They're not trying to be everything to everyone. And they're the type of product that it's, it's either gonna work for your organization or it's not. And one thing I like about the product and the way they run themselves as an organization is that they're, they're very clear about what, what it is they are and what they're not. And they, they tend to focus pretty well. And for that reason, we don't see our clients include them on their short list very often, but when they do, they have a very high win rate. So they're beating out in many cases, larger, better known ERP vendors like Microsoft E365, in some cases, Oracle or SAP. And for that reason, we may want to consider IFS as an option. The other thing with IFS is they are, tend to be a little bit more focused on the mid-market. So they're a great option if you're too big for, say, a, a NetSuite or a, a Tier 2 or Tier 3 solution or a traditional Tier 2 or Tier 3 system. They might be a better option than some of those smaller systems, but they're not going to be quite as complex and overly cumbersome as an SAP or an Oracle or maybe even a D365. So those are some of the strengths of the product, but let's talk about where the product fits, because like I said before, it doesn't fit in every client situation. Where IFS thrives and succeeds is going to be in a number of key industries. We see a lot of traction in the construction industry. Any, any organization that focuses on commercial or residential construction or even infrastructure construction tends to find that IFS is a good fit because it has very strong project management capabilities, project costing, uh, assigning materials and inventory to different projects, the types of functionality that construction organizations need. The other situation where IFS fits really well is in companies like uh, utilities, gas and electric utilities, telco companies, any organization that uses field service technicians or has field service crews. They have very strong mobile workforce capabilities and they're able to track data and provide better customer experience using some of that field service capability. So companies in the construction, utilities, oil and gas industries tend to find that IFS is a good alternative to consider. The other area where we see some good traction is industrial manufacturing. Companies that aren't consumer products necessarily, they're not super high volume complex supply chains, but industrial product manufacturers that have pretty basic supply chain in, in manufacturing needs, uh, that tends to fit IFS's sweet spot as well. So 
so some of the additional strengths we see with IFS, first of all, is the flexibility of the product. Uh, they have a programming solution that allows you to create on the customer layer or your own layer of the software customization to the software without affecting the core system. And just having seen the, the programming in use, and I'm by no means a programmer, by the way, I'm not a developer, so I'm a little bit over my head on this part of it, but having seen how you go through the process of customizing that core layer, it doesn't look that complex and it looks like something that uh, even the more um, novice types of IT resources would be able to handle internally within your organization. So that flexibility of the product itself is something that seems to be a strength of our clients that are using the product. The other strength is that IFS tends to focus on customer experience, which is something I think gets lost in a lot of digital transformations. The fact that IFS's strength is on the field service side of things where that in many cases is the one touch point that organizations have with their customers and that defines people's perception of the organizations. That customer experience is something they're very strong in and not enough ERP systems, in my opinion, are focused on that customer experience right now. They tend to be more focused on the more fundamental back office stuff like financials, inventory management, which is important stuff, but the game changers are gonna come more on the customer experience side, especially for these field-driven types of organizations. And then finally, one of the strengths, which is more of a qualitative intangible, is the fact that the company doesn't seem to be forcing cloud deployment down customers' throats like a lot of other vendors are. Even though cloud is their highest growth area of the business, there's still a lot of customers we're seeing that are still deploying the on-premise versions and they, they're okay with that, at least for now. That could always change because cloud is more profitable. They're gonna make more money off cloud in the longer term and at some point they're gonna have to decide where they invest their R&D dollars rather than splitting between the two solutions. But at least for now, they seem pretty comfortable with, with that bifurcated deployment option. When I was at the conference a couple weeks ago, the CEO even mentioned that cloud is not always best for customers and ERP vendors push the cloud only because it makes them more money. And it's something I totally agree with. In fact, it's the first time I've heard the CEO or an executive of any major ERP vendor admit that reality. So it tells me that they do take seriously the deployment options and recognizing that, that every customer is different and has different deployment needs. Now, just like every product out in the marketplace, there are weaknesses with IFS in, in situations where the product isn't going to fit. IFS's strength is not going to be in your core consolidated financials and financial reporting and, and really sexy dashboard type of capability. There's other products out there that can do that piece of it better. Having said that, the underlying financials of project management, project costing, and all the financials that go along with that is a strength, but in terms of just general financial capabilities, there are other options out there that are as good as or better than IFS in that regard. The other area that isn't IFS's particular strength is when you start to get into complex distribution and uh, high volume warehouse management types of situations, that doesn't seem to be their sweet spot and where their focus is. So if you've got a complex manufacturing environment or complex manufacturing and distribution supply chain environment, there are other products out there that can handle that capability better. And quite frankly, IFS doesn't tend to pursue those opportunities, at least not from what we've seen in the marketplace. So that leads us to what does the future hold for IFS? Where do they go from here? How do they continue to grow and continue to adopt, uh, adapt to the marketplace and adopt new customers? One is the continued focus on field services. They've recently acquired some smaller but significant field service software providers that they're rolling into the IFS fold. So they're clearly doubling down and taking very seriously that field service management approach. Another is that focus on the mid-market. We don't see them going after the big Fortune 500s or the Fortune 1000s yet, although they do have a few logos on their portfolio that are among the, the biggest companies. The real sweet spot tends to be in the mid-market, so that's where we're seeing most clients that are interested. The companies that are a few hundred million up to a couple billion in revenue, those seem to be the sweet spot of, of customers for IFS. And then finally, IFS appears to be mitigating and addressing what I would consider probably their biggest weakness, which is their lack of a partner network, uh, system integrators and resellers, people that can actually provide the functional and technical expertise to deploy the software. They're investing very heavily in that from what I can tell, and that seems to be an area of focus for the organization going forward. 
So that is the good, the bad, the ugly about IFS. It's something that if you fit the profile of what we've described here today, you may want to consider IFS on your long list or short list. As always, feel free to reach out if you would like feedback beyond what I've shared in this video, or if you'd like to know how IFS compares to other systems out there. I'm completely agnostic, unbiased, and I don't really care what system wins out in your evaluation process, and neither does our team. So I'm happy to bounce around ideas and be a sounding board for you as you go through the process. I've also included some links below, some resources such as our top 10 ERP list, our annual ERP report, and other resources that will help you through your evaluation and selection process. So I want to thank you very much for your time. Please like this video, share it with colleagues, and provide any comments you might have, any feedback around IFS, your experience with IFS. I'd love to hear your feedback below in the comments field. Thanks very much for your time and have a great day.